So today we're talking about an element of a style of programming that's known as functional programming. And this is not something that is straightforward to define. I think a functional programming is really a style of programming. There are functional programming languages that enforce aspects of this style. So for example, there are functional programming languages that don't allow you to write a loop. This very basic construct that we've been using, right, uh, to repeat you know, to, to perform an iterative calculation. There are some languages where you just can't even do that. They don't have a looping construct. There's no way to write a loop. Um, Kotlin is clearly not that language, but particularly compared to Java, Kotlin has much better support for what is referred to as this functional style of programming than Java does. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about it. To, to me, there's really two things. You can go through the article yourself and kind of uh, read up on this, but there's really two things that define for me a functional style. The first is that functions are first class citizens in the language, meaning that they can be saved to variables, they can be passed to other functions, and they are treated really just like any other value. Like you save an int into a variable, you save a, a reference to a method into a variable. Now, Java has support for this sort of in these really sort of ugly ways, but fundamentally, Java is an object-oriented language. That's its home paradigm. Um, and really the attempts to get Java to behave in a more functional way are a kind of hacks that people came up with later. In contrast, Kotlin was clearly designed from the ground up to support a functional style of programming. That doesn't mean that it's a purely functional language. It's definitely not. It supports object-oriented programming and imperative programming. It obviously has loops and other things that are missing from purely functional languages. But at the same time, Kotlin has much better support for uh, this functional paradigm. In Kotlin, you can directly save a reference to a method into a variable, and you can actually also define methods that accept functions as variables. We haven't done that yet, and I'm not sure we will do it this semester. Uh, you might see this a little bit in certain places uh, as we go forward, but this is possible in Kotlin and actually super useful in certain cases. The second thing that defines a functional style is an attempt, so, so you think about functional, what does it mean? So function is the term that in this case is being borrowed from math, right? Um, and if you think about what that means, well, the first thing is we're gonna try to compose our program out of functions and the ability to store them in variables and pass them to other functions is an important component of that. The other thing about functions is that uh, there's this idea of, in functional programming, of a pure method, meaning that given the same inputs, it always produces the same output. Now, if you think about the objects that we've been creating, object-oriented programming is sort of fundamentally not very well aligned with a functional style because objects store state. So when you call an object method several times, frequently what that method is doing is updating the local state and returning a different result. Now, in a purely functional language, a function called with the same arguments must produce the same result every time. This is sort of a mathematical property of functions. It is very powerful, this idea, because it allows you to do a variety of different types of optimization on your program. So for example, if a function always returns the same output given the same input, if I call the function again with the same arguments, I don't even have to run it. I can just return the result it returned last time when I called it with those same arguments. Now, Kotlin is not a purely functional language. There are purely functional languages. You'll learn some of them later in our program, and you can certainly go and experiment with them on your own um, that will force you into this style. And, you know, some people say that's the best way to learn how to, to program in a functional style is to, to use a functional language and kind of like, I mean, you know, put, put, put yourself in a box where you can't write a loop, right? So you have to learn these other ways of doing things. I'm not sure I 100% agree with that. I write a lot of code. I write a lot of Kotlin code. Uh, it's my preferred language. A lot of my code is written in a functional style, but Kotlin's not a purely functional language. So it turns out that there are places where it's very nice to have these escape hatches where you can still write imperative code. Um, but there are aspects of Kotlin that are designed to help support this idea of pure functions and sort of immutable data. That's the other aspect here is that once we set a value, we don't want to change it. So if expressions, when expressions in Kotlin, the fact that I can set a variable based on the result of an if statement allows me to make that variable immutable, which then plays into this functional style of program. So um, this is you know, something that we'll see little hints and bits and pieces of as we go forward. It's not a major focus of our, of our study in terms of how to program. We're really teaching you primarily imperative and object-oriented styles. But functional programming is a really powerful style. Um, it's very beautiful. It's very elegant in certain ways and concise. 
and it is a great addition to your toolkit later on. And one of the things that's really great about Kotlin is that as you go forward with the language, you're going to learn a lot more about these really cool things you can do with it. And learning how to program in a functional style is very well supported in Kotlin. And I think many of you will go on and do that in the future and really enjoy it. So I'm uh, just giving you a little bit of a taste of this today, but just know that Kotlin as a language supports this extremely well. And if you want to continue to learn how to use this style, you will have that opportunity as you continue to learn Kotlin.